Welcome to Graber Works. I hope you enjoyed today's video, and if you do, please like, subscribe, and comment. Today's video is about building the Rockler Adjustable Laptop Desk. Here are a few views of the completed Adjustable Laptop Desk, less the Lockdown Star Knobs, which were 3D printing at the time of these videos. I'm currently building a CNC router and decided to dedicate my current roll around computer desk to the CNC router. That means I needed another place to put my laptop for use with the CO2 laser. I wanted something portable, looks good, and made from scraps of plywood I had lying around. The Rockler adjustable laptop desk plans fit that bill and I purchased the plans. I decided to forego the cup holder. If I decide that I want the cup holder later, I can cut it after the laptop desk is finished. There will be two videos on the Rockler adjustable laptop desk covering the cutting and then the assembly of the desk. Rockler did a great job with the adjustable laptop desk plans and the project. They give you a good purchase parts list and you can purchase them directly from Rockler or you can source them from another company. I have a 3D printer and printed my own 5 star knobs from a file that I got on Thingiverse. The Rockler desktop plans also give a clear exploded view drawing with part names and sizes. Rockler also supplies a part details list for parts with a radius or slots on them with dimensions. The full sheet plywood cutting diagrams look to be good, but I didn't use them other than for dimensions because I was using scrap plywood of various sizes for the adjustable laptop desk. The plans also come with building instructions, which were good and included a few pictures. I would suggest that if you are going to build an adjustable laptop desk, you should study the plans carefully before you start to cut any plywood and utilize common table saw setups for cutting widths of the parts, which will make the job go smoother and faster with less errors. The first step was to gather up scrap plywood for each size and determine if I needed to purchase any plywood. Fortunately, I had the plywood the right lengths or longer, thicknesses, and the widths were wider than required. Some pieces were Baltic birch and some were pine. If this was going into my living room, I would have made it all from the same species of plywood. The second step was to see what hardware I had around to see if I needed to get something. I have most of the required hardware, but I'll need to get the 5 star knobs, T-bolts, and two non-locking casters. I 3D printed the 5 star knobs and purchased the two non-locking casters from Harbor Freight to match the swivel casters that I already had. The third step was to cut the plywood scrap to the correct lengths and widths and make sure that the pieces were square. I laid the plywood out so that I would cut common lengths and widths that would avoid additional setups on the table saw. Remember, safety first, last, and always. Take the necessary precautions to ensure your safety because you are responsible for it. And 30 seconds of safety can save you days, weeks, months, or years of recovery from a nasty injury. I 
I really like the micro jig push blocks, and they have saved me from injury on one occasion. I use them every chance I get. Housekeeping is another area that I focus on. I clean the shop, inspect, and put the tools back when I'm finished with them. I also inspect and clean the machines as I go, which ensures they are ready to go for the next job. The fourth step was to lay out and cut the radius in the top side rails, base posts, and base legs. I used my bandsaw to cut the radius after laying the radius out on the parts. The radius cuts went pretty fast, although I was not rushing the process, but focused on the job and where my hands and fingers were in order to avoid the injury. I bought the bandsaw from a friend and got a really good deal on it. It has upgraded Carter bearings and guides, a Carter quick release blade tensioner, and urethane tires, all of which I added to make this a very usable and enjoyable piece of equipment. It also has an upgraded adjustable fence that's easy and accurate and allows for resawing, but I'm not sure who made it and it already came installed on the bandsaw when I bought it. The fifth step was to cut the 5 16 inch wide slot in the adjustable post and drill the holes in the base post. I set up my Rockler router table using my DeWalt router. I set up the start and stop stops to control the length of the slots. I also made the cuts in several passes to ensure that I didn't burn the router bits or wood. I can see another project in the future to modify the router table fence and add an adjustable stop. I used micro jig push blocks on the final few passes to ensure that I didn't get hurt and I was able to control the work pieces. If you look closely at one of the boards, you can see where I moved off the fence and caused a bad cut. Not bad enough to scrap, but bad nonetheless. I did clean up the dust as I went to make sure that I was on the fence with each cut. The sixth step was to sand around over the edges on all parts. Here I used my DeWalt hand sander to sand all parts smooth and to lightly round over the edges of the parts. I started with 120 grit sandpaper and went up to 220 grit to get a smooth surface finish. This step took the longest because I sanded all parts with each grip of sandpaper before moving up to the next grit. I then stacked all the parts on my workbench and did a final inspection to ensure all parts were to the proper size, sanded, and ready for assembly. Assembly will be in part two of the series. Thank you for watching Graber Works and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did like the video, please give a thumbs up, subscribe for future videos, and comment. Thanks again.